What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and this is Top 10 Thursday. As many of you know, I have this strange obsession with trying to beat bad games. If I hear about a project that's a particularly big dumpster fire, I always want to try and track it down and conquer it. It's not just about the storylines, it's not just about the side quests, it's that I'm kind of fascinated by really, really, really badly designed gameplay. And today, I wanted to talk about some games that I've managed to play, that I've managed to finish, that are just so awful, I genuinely wish I could go into my brain and flat out erase them. These are my picks of the top 10 games that I beat that I wish I could forget. Number 10. Resident Evil 6. Okay, so I need to start this list off with a bit of a confession, which is that I absolutely hate this game. It is a legendary disappointment. In my opinion, the Resident Evil series, it's always managed to be focused. The early games managed to master that really creepy survival horror essence. The middle games introduced new characters and new monsters and new lore to try and make it where the universe felt more fleshed out. Then of course there was Resident Evil 5 that felt like it was trying to add in this nice fun with your friends dynamic. And then suddenly they decided to ruin everything with Resident Resident Evil 6. This game is a blemish on the franchise. It is so freaking bad. And what kind of annoys me the most is that now the games have gotten good again. Resident Evil 7 is magnificent. This game is incredibly bad, but more than that, it's just so out of place. It drives me nuts. Number 9. Duke Nukem Forever. There's a famous quote in the gaming industry from Shigeru Miyamoto, the inventor of Mario and Donkey Kong, where one time he said this, A delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is bad forever. This was basically his way of saying that you gotta give developers time. If they're trying to work on a very special project, you can't exactly just tell them to release it. They need that time to really cook up some fun, cool ideas. But this isn't always the case. Delayed games sometimes still come out incredibly incomplete and sometimes just as utter trash, which is certainly the case with Duke Nukem Forever. This game, look how awful these graphics are. This is 10 years of development. Within that 10 years, Multiple teams worked on it, it had different graphics engines, it was on separate consoles. This thing is so bad, and it's just so disappointing to me. I was actually excited about this. I played some Duke Nukem as a kid, it was kind of the edgy, cool shooter, so when a new one was coming out, of course I was excited for it. And then, after a decade of anticipation, the fact that this is a bland corridor shooter, it is still just one of those things that I wish I could just slowly erase it from my brain and pretend that it's still in development. I could still fancy fantasized about the amazingness of a Duke Nukem that never released. Number 8. Left Alive. This game brings back so many bad memories, it still just kind of haunts me how freaking awful this project was. Now there's a good chance you've never heard of this. Left Alive was like an experimental side project by Square Enix, where clearly they wanted to make their own stealth robot -y game. You're playing as like a mech pilot, kind of creeping through all these streets and stuff, and it has some pretty heavy inspirations from Metal Gear Solid. The difference is, where Metal Gear is fun, this is super unnerving. Annoying. It puts in weird checkpoints, it is very unforgiving with the difficulty, and sometimes being spotted leads to an instant kill and repeating a 20 minute level that is incredibly annoying and badly built. Everything about this game drove me nuts. And even now looking at it, it's one of those games that failed, and this sounds mean to say, I'm glad this game failed, because nobody should be remembering it. Number 7. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. If you were one of those kids that was lucky enough to grow up in the 90s like I was, there's a good chance that you played some of these games back in the past. The early Tony Hawks. The games that were more than just sports. It was more than just high scores and kickflips. More than just great soundtracks. These games were almost a cultural revolution. It made people want to actually go out in the streets and skate because the gameplay was so good. And then it turned into this. 
Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 is a shameless cash grab. It does not play well, the physics have you shooting into the sky, and more than that, it just has so much product placement. Like, even the timers themselves were based on a watch brand. I mean, this was practically a $60 commercial. And the worst part, it was so glitchy. When I was playing this game, I got all the way up to the last level, which was aggravating as heck, but when I got there, as soon as I was trying to do the first trick on the final ramp, the game crashed in the middle of an autosave and deleted my save file, virtually erasing the fact that I had ever played it. It made me so infuriated because not only does this game suck, but now I was going to have to grind my way all the way back through it. So I've decided, Tony Hawk's 5, this is a game I would rather just forget. Number 6. Valkyria Revolution so there's this lesser known Sega series called Valkyria Chronicles, and basically what they are is they're like action combat tactical RPGs. You walk around, you take some shots, but it's all very turn-based. They are strategic in such an addictive manner, and so because of it, despite the fact that this isn't as big as the other Sega stuff, they have a very, very dedicated fan base, which is the people who were incredibly upset when they decided to do a spin-off called Revolution, which pretty much disregards everything that made this franchise so cool in the first place. This is an action game that is just so sloppy. The idea behind it is that you have like action phases and everybody has to like cast spells. None of it works. I mean, the story is like cringy anime times a million with like amnesia, super soldiers and civil war. It is so bad. Every part of this game drives me wild because they could have done it right. I mean, the studio has managed to churn out so many amazing hidden gems and then you sit down and make this i mean i hate to ask this but are you guys smoking crack what is going on number five lawbreakers all right, so you may notice that this gameplay here looks a little bit strange. It shakes, it jitters, it doesn't exactly run great. Well, this is the game itself. This is how it looked. And you notice I have to use past tense because Lawbreakers is completely dead. Now, the other stuff on this list, it's possible to look up everything we're talking about today and play for yourself, except for Lawbreakers. This studio put every single penny into this abysmal project only for it to completely flop. This was the final game that was made by Cliff Blazinski, the guy who invented Gears of War. Well, for a guy who's such a creative genius, his last game was pretty much a watered-down, crappier version of Overwatch. I mean, the balancing was awful, the idea of trying to play Capture the Flag with these different heroes was not exciting, and the worst part, it ran like this. I mean, this game should have just been so buttery smooth, it was so freaking bad. Every piece of this game was a technical nightmare, and even now when I look at this gameplay, it just makes me shudder to think about how they thought that this would be a success. It was just so clearly incomplete when they decided to release it, nobody bought it, and they all failed. So guess you learned your lesson, but I sure don't want to remember this lesson because god dang does Lawbreakers blow. Number 4. Silent Hill Downpour. There was this massive movement that took over the internet a couple years back called F. Konami. It was basically just gamers trying to make this studio, Konami, kind of be held accountable for all their sins. They had some very shady business deals, they did things like disrespecting their consumers and definitely their developers. Pretty much everybody hated Konami, and this hate, it still exists today. But in my opinion, one of the things that kind of subtly pushed the F. Konami movement at the start was Silent Hill Downpour. This game is downright garbage. But more than just being a bad game and not being frightening, I also feel like it's just so deeply disrespectful to Silent Hill aficionados. If you're somebody who actually cares about the town of Silent Hill, if you want this to have good plot and cool stuff that advances this universe, it does none of that. This game is shockingly bland, and that's the worst part, is that after trying to hype this game up for years, as a project it was originally called Silent Hill 8, and it was supposed to be considered, this is going to be the scariest game ever. A psychological sense of terror that's going to get inside your mind and play with your memories. And now, I wish I could delete my memories of it. This game is so freaking terrible, and in my opinion, it was the last straw to Silent Hill. Number 3. Reservoir Dogs Bloody Days 
This is easily one of the worst games I have ever played in my life, and I'm being completely serious about that. This game has this weird mechanic where basically it is a co-op twin stick shooter, but single player, which means what you do, and this is going to completely blow your mind, you play through a level as one character, you rewind time, and then place a second character through the same level, and then do it a third time. The only way to do this is now each of your previous characters are on rails following the original path you walked in and you have to protect them. It is the clunkiest system that does not work. You will die hundreds and hundreds of times while trying to play this game because the AI just makes no sense. I mean, why would I try and make my characters move up foot by foot, piece by piece in this really mechanical system if it's just so broke? If you've been subscribed for a while, I'm sure you realize this, but I've reviewed literally hundreds of games. I have gone deep on so many different styles and genres, and I can definitively say this is the worst thing I've probably ever tested in my life. And still to this day, I wish I could forget it just so that I could put in extra fun memories in my brain. Like think about the fact that I probably forgot a family picnic or something because of Reservoir Dogs and its stupid mechanics that I actually had to sit down and learn. Learn. Ah, why did you do this to me? Number two, Metal Gear Survive. I'm pretty forgiving when it comes to sequels and spin-offs. A lot of times, as long as a franchise has a good reason or an explanation for why the storyline itself exists, it can at least spark my curiosity. If you get invested in that series, of course you want to see all the different directions it can go. But with this game, Survive is a dumpster fire. The idea behind it is that this is an alternate universe of Metal Gear Solid. You're going to be playing as this custom character who's trying to survive in this like pocket dimension mention of zombies that have crystals for heads and all sorts of explosive demon beasts. And the only way to survive is to sneak around with a stick, poking them, and building magical fences out of the ground. Now, everything about this game is bonkers. It doesn't really make sense. It's kind of been roasted by everybody on the internet before, but one of the things I feel like is just so conventionally overlooked is the fact that this also had a hunger and thirst system that made the screen blurry. The longer I'm a gamer, the more I just deeply despise anything that messes with your viewpoints. I mean, clear visuals is the most basic aspect of any game. Let me see the action. Let me at least witness the zombies as they shamble up with their awful animations. This game is just from the ground up. It seems like impossible. I mean, the fact that this really was developed by a team of people and not just pulled out of the depths of hell still baffles me to this day. I'm glad that this is gone. I'm glad that nobody's playing it because Metal Gear Survive, from top to bottom, this should not have ever even come out. Number one, World of Warcraft Classic. So this final game is very different from the rest of this video because this is not based on hate or annoyance, but instead on regret. I have spent literally thousands and thousands of hours playing World of Warcraft Classic. You may not know this, but this game is very, very mathematical for an RPG. If you want to play it good, you have to study these huge charts and spreadsheets that really calculate out the very, very best way that you can play your character. And above this, you also need to practice. You need to spend so much time just gathering up all the best items, the best spells, the strongest potions, and even getting different abilities that'll make it where you can just fight better than anybody else on the planet. And for the most part, this is what the WoW community loves. The people who log into World of Warcraft, they want to really push themselves to the limit to try and compare their charts and see who really is the best player. Over the course of these thousands of hours, I competed in big tournaments. I managed to make some friends. I killed so many different dragons. And while I have some great stories from my times here, I do also kind of just regret it. I kind of wish I could just erase all of it and forget all this time wasted in Azeroth, this land, because it's just kind of useless. The World of Warcraft developers over at Blizzard, they don't care about this game. They've basically abandoned it. It is now this shell of an experience that just goes unpatched, unmoderated. It's the Wild West, but with more weird random monsters in it. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm sad. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. And for that reason, I do genuinely wish that I could just forget this game ever existed. 
Did your most hated game not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. I know I haven't done a top 10 in a while. To be honest, I I've had this like kind of quarantine depression-ish thing going on where I just haven't felt like writing list videos. But now I'm kind of getting out of my funk. I'm getting back into my groove. So expect more of these in the future. Much love. Thank you everybody who's been telling me to make more top 10s. Top 10 Thursday is something that I've been doing now for years and years and years. And it kind of feels nice to, to be making it again. So thank you for the support. Thank you for the subscriptions. Thank you for everything. You guys rock. And really, this show exists because of you. I mean, if we're being clear, basically, you made this. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last. Or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.